Well, hello and welcome to today's Bible reading and devotional time. This is for Monday. Happy Monday, February 12th, 2024. Thank you for joining me. And before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe bar and then the notification bell when it comes up so you'll be notified whenever content's added to the channel. And comment on these videos, like these videos, share these videos. Yeah, you know that. Today's reading will be out of Matthew chapter 14 as we continue our uh, series on 21 Days of Promises generated by the folks at Logos. And no, I don't receive any kind of compensation or consideration from them. It's just one of the uh, uh, softwares uh, that I use, as is uh, BibleSoft, which is what you'll see momentarily on the screen with our text today. Now, Matthew chapter 14 is where uh, John the Baptist, uh, it, this is told in, in a sort of flashback, I guess you could call it, where John the Baptist is confronting Herod uh, the Tetrarch about his unlawful uh, remarriage to his brother Philip's wife. And uh, Herod the Tetrarch is also known as Herod Antipas. Uh, I'm not real sure when he was born, sometime before 20 BC, died sometime about AD 39, maybe a little after. He became the Tetrarch, the, he had the title king uh, after his father, Herod the Great, died in about 4 BC. And Herod the Great remembers the one that ordered the uh, murder of all the male children ages two and under in Jerusalem, or excuse me, in Bethlehem after uh, Jesus was born. And from my reading, uh, Herod Antiochus was not the first choice to succeed his father, but he ended up being the one who became uh, king. And here's the uh, family tree. As you can see up here at the top is, uh, here is Herod the Great right here. And, and Herod Antiochus is down here. Let's see, you can see my highlighter there. And here's his brother, Philip, that he steals his wife from that we're going to read about here in a minute. And then you come on down uh, to the rest of them. And uh, Herod Agrippa I is apparently the main one we read about in the book of Acts. Uh, but you've got all their uh, names here. And uh, there's some, of, there's quite a bit, I think, about them in uh, secular history so far as... Uh, ancient people are concerned they're they're fairly well documented and then this is one of his coins a coin of herod and herod antipas uh, uh this inscription right here uh tiba uh, t-i-b-e second word p-i-a-c uh, in reference to tiberius caesar who was the emperor who appointed him these are all political positions, and uh, if you didn't have the approval of Rome, then you weren't going to get it. So this is uh, one of the coins, and over here is uh, of Herod the Tetrarch. And this coin, you can see the years down here, somewhere AD 33 to uh, AD 29 to 30. Okay, let's go to our reading. At the time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Because John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. That's one of the thing about the Herods. They were all very ruthless. They were tyrants. They were not considered uh, good people at all. And they would think nothing of executing or killing a political, appoint uh, political opponents. It was just second nature to them. They just were that ruthless and that, uh, that nasty of a, of a people. And so John the Baptist uh, told him it wasn't lawful for him to have his wife. That that, that was an unscriptural divorce and a remarriage, basically. And so Herod wanted to get rid of John, but he, you know, the people count him as a prophet, which is the same problem the Pharisees had when Jesus asked, well, where was the baptism of John from? From heaven or from men? Uh, if we say from, from men, the people will stone us. They considered him a prophet. So 
John the Baptist, despite his being in jail, there was quite a bit of political uh, weight associated with him. So verse 6, when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Therefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. Now, an oath is not just, yeah, I promise we'll go to lunch one day, we'll do whatever. He basically he basically raised his right hand and said, uh, I do solemnly swear that I will give you whatever you want. In, in so many words, that's what he did. And so to go back on this would be a serious matter and more than just breaking a, a routine or a regular promise. So verse eight, so she having been prompted by her mother said to give me John the Baptist's head on a platter. And the king was very sorry. Nevertheless, because of the oath and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he had witnesses uh, to what he did. So there's no way he could say, well, you know, I didn't really mean that or Oh, come on, I was just kidding, or no, what, what are you talking about? I didn't say that. He's got too many people there who were there saying, oh, yes, you did. You said that. So he was sorry, but because of the oath, he went ahead and did it. And so he sent and had John beheaded in prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Now, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, how messed up, I guess, do you have to be to want the literal head of somebody on a platter and then to carry it, uh, to get it and then carry it to somebody? She has got to be just one, uh, her, this Herodias has got to be just one messed up woman. And I don't think her daughter was really any better. But here's a, a, the the point we have to understand is be uh, be very careful promises that you make because you may be held to account for them and you may come to regret it. Uh, the very first Sunday school class I ever taught was second graders. My car wouldn't start and I needed to jump and I called a friend who happened to be the education director at the church. And he came and got me. He said, I don't have time to jump your car. Just come on and, and we'll jump it later. So he asked me about taking the second grade class. And I had never taught a class before. And I said, oh, well, kind of let me think about it and that sort of thing. We got to the church building and we were talking as we went in, went downstairs and we come to the class and he hands me the quarterly and says, I'll see you after class and walked out. So I'm kind of stuck. In the class was a young girl who had, and I don't know the technical term, but it's commonly called water on the brain. And so she had a unusually shaped head. But I knew this girl a little bit, and I was told to never make her a promise unless you intended to keep it, because she, number one, had a photographic memory. Number two, she would remember that promise, and she would hold you to it. So be very careful about any promises you make. To anybody, we should keep our promises. We should just say what we're going to do and do it. Uh, but don't let yourself get caught in there where you get a reputation of not following through. And so, do what you say, what you're going to do, and do it. But be careful, especially if it's something like this that could come back to haunt you. So that's our reading for today. So let's close out in prayer. Now, uh, praying for our families. We're getting a new week underway, so let's pray for our families. Let's uh, pray God's guidance on them. And for our heads of family, uh, let's pray for them as they're making decisions and uh, guiding their families. And for the physical as well as spiritual well-being. So let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for a new week. Thank you for watching over us through the weekend. And we just pray, Lord, now as we're getting into our day that we will uh, glorify you as we go through this week. And we want to pray for our families, pray for their physical well-being. Uh, I've got some relatives that are dealing with health issues. I want to lift them up to you and pray for the spiritual well-being of our families as well. Help the heads of household, the fathers, and in some cases, the single mothers. Uh, we want you to, uh, we pray for them, Lord, and pray you'll give them guidance to raise their families Give them the courage to make the right calls and give us all the courage, Lord, to stand for you, to stand for what is right in your uh, sight. 
And we want to pray for those who aren't Christians, Lord, to become Christians and help us to set the right example for them and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you have any questions, you can send them to me or you can leave them in the comment section below. That is going to do it for today. We will see you in the next video. Have a great Monday. I'm done and I am out.